And I love Jesus Christ. And I contend with those who call themselves Christians. I contend with you. I compete with you in, 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 in my love for Jesus Christ and my attachment to his message and his mission. But no, I don't say that blasphemy against God. I don't put forward and perpetuate that lie concerning Jesus Christ. He never said that he is God and Jesus Christ never said worship me. So I don't say Jesus is God nor do I say that we should worship Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ never asked anybody to call themselves Christians either just in case you don't know that. He was the Christ. In Arabic it's called Masih. Masih or Messiah. It means anointed or appointed, or selected, or touched by God. Yes, he was. He was touched by God. He was appointed by God. He was anointed by God. He was selected by God. And he said, I can of my own self do nothing. But whatsoever I am ordered from the one on high, that is what I do. He said, in his prayer, called the Lord's Prayer, My Father, who art in heaven. Our Father, who art in heaven. Meaning God the sustainer, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. He didn't say my name or our name. Thy kingdom come. Not my kingdom come or our kingdom come. Thy will be done. Not my will be done or our will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Give us. This is Jesus talking now. Give us this, daily bed, this day our daily bread. Give who? Give me and my mother and all of us our daily bread. And certainly if God gave him daily bread, which he asked for, God also gave him daily drink. Because you can't swallow bread without drinking. And if Jesus Christ and his mother, if they ate bread and drank water, their bodies used whatever part was nutritious and their bodies evacuated what was waste. Now can you imagine God defecating and urinating? This is what Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. It's Jesus' prayer. Don't be aggravated with me. I'm reminding you of the Lord's prayer. Because I was a Christian, born a Christian, and I memorized this prayer. And I know it very well. And it is consistent with a prophet and a messenger who made that prayer. And deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, not mine is the kingdom, not ours is the kingdom, but thine is the kingdom. Forever and ever, amen. This is the Lord's Prayer. We have a love for Noah, Abraham, Moses, Zechariah, David, Solomon, Isaac, Ismael, Jacob, Lot, John, Jesus the Christ, and Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon all of them. And they all were servants of God, servants who submitted their wills to God. And the word Muslim means a servant or one that submits themselves to God. By that definition, Abraham was a Muslim, Moses was a Muslim, Solomon and David were Muslims. Isaac, Ismail, and Jacob were Muslims. John the Baptist, the son of Zechariah. Jesus, the son of Mary. And Muhammad, the son of Abdullah. All of them were servants of Almighty God. And all of them were Muslims. And it wasn't until 354 years after Jesus Christ, at the Council of Nicaea, that the pagan 
idolaters and Romans determined that Jesus Christ was the man God. And they were the ones that brought about the idea of Trinity, sonship, and divinity of Jesus Christ. 354 years after Jesus Christ, that's almost 400 years. Jesus Christ himself had nothing to do with the Trinity. And Jesus Christ himself had nothing to do with divinity being placed upon him. And Jesus Christ had nothing to do with calling himself the Son of God, except that he used a generality. The metaphor that all of us are metaphorically, allegorically, the sons of God, sons and daughters. Not that God had a son begat, God gave birth. But if you remember in the Old Testament, God said, Isaiah is my son. God said that Abraham even is my son. God said that David is my son. God mentioned this not because they were born of God, but it means son means chosen. Chosen by God. Selected by God. A person dedicated to God, whom God loves and God blesses. By that definition, God had sons by the tons. As such, Jesus Christ was not the exclusive son of God, if we want to use that terminology at all. But Jesus called himself the son of man. That's what he called himself. He was called that rabbi, that man from Nazareth. And his followers were called Nazarenes. They never called themselves Christians. It was at the Council of Nicaea that this word Christianity was determined. And so whoever adopted the new Nicaean creed became Christians. And those who did not were Nazarenes and they were killed. We believe that Jesus Christ was born without the introduction of sperm. We believe that because God creates what he wills. We believe that God created Adam, no father and mother. We believe that God created his mate, Eve. We believe. And God says in the Quran, when they ask thee about Jesus Christ, say, the likeness of Jesus is the likeness of Adam. God created both of them from dust and his word. And he said, be, and they became. This is our belief. That if God created Adam, and he had no mother and father, and his mate, and she had no mother and father. Then why is it difficult for us to believe and understand and accept that God created Jesus Christ with no father but had a mother? This is our belief. We believe that Jesus Christ spoke from the cradle and performed many miracles. Yes, he raised the dead. He caused the blind to see. He healed the lepers. He fed the multitudes. 10,000 people from seven loaves of, of bread and seven fish. Yes. Yes, he took a clay pigeon and blew into it and it flew away. But he said he did this by the leave and the power of God. And when he was called good master by someone, he said, why dost thou call me good master when there's none good except the one that is in heaven? We believe that Jesus Christ was one of the most great and powerful prophets and messenger of Almighty God, but that did not make him a man God or a God man. Such is the elevated position of Jesus Christ in the faith of Islam.